My name is Jake Bash. I'm here in New Orleans with Matt. And, you know, I'll come clean right at the top. I am about as novice as it gets with electrifying my lifestyle. So any of the other novices in here, just know like you found the right place because just two weeks with Matt, I've learned so much. So, you know, kind of my role is just to help make sure that we're cultivating an environment that um, includes all spectrums of the community of electrifying our lifestyles. So super excited to be here and welcome to the welcome to the course. Game on, Jake. That is so fun. I don't know if that's fun for y'all. It's absolutely delightful for me to have a, a co-pilot. So glad you're here, man. Thanks. Okay, so here we go. I'm screen sharing. Quick thumbs up if you can see that and you've got a good look at it. Uh, I know Eric's lying because he's on an iPhone walking through the Atlanta airport, but I appreciate your enthusiasm, man. Okay, here we go. Um, this is what our hour looks like. We're going to do intros. I'm going to talk to you about the number one goal that Jake and I have for you for the month. We're then going to talk about uh, getting gas. That's my first gas joke of the session. It probably won't be the last. If you don't like gas jokes, I apologize in advance. I'm just going to, you know, just go there because they're fun. Um, we're going to talk about why electrifying after we get this high level picture of how the gas world that we all grew up in and have been accustomed to works. And then we're going to start talking about uh, why it makes sense to start in our homes. Um, and, and there's some real leverage there uh, that understanding the energy flows can help us get our back into. And then we're going to spend a bulk of the time working on your personal plans it does some of you are way down the road some of you are brand new rookies like jake that's what this class is for um there there are a few things that i think distinguish this from a youtube video uh, number one is that that we are a very wide spectrum of folks on this journey and I, I want you to leave the month realizing that this is a journey that you can take and you can have a, a real impact on climate uh, by just this simple rule of replacing all your gas machines with electric ones when they break. You don't have to go out and throw everything out tomorrow, um, but there is a way for you to contribute to at least the science suggesting that if everyone uh, in the modernized world replace their gas stuff when it wears out, we can get within shooting distance of one and a half degrees Celsius. And so there's some science behind our thesis of equipping you to replace your gas stuff when it wears out. That's sort of the overarching theme that we'll come back to often. And it's why we call the course and this community. We're going to really focus on making sure your next fill in the blank is electric. That's that's kind of where we're headed. When we finish that individual work, I'm going to give you a look at what's up uh, for the rest of the month. And then I'm going to get five minutes of your time if you're able. And if we hit our schedule, uh, for your feedback. So that's the schedule. Uh, that's where we're headed. Uh, let's get after it. This is our goal. Um, you know, Jake and I have a commitment to making uh, you believe and understand and eventually actually love the process of electrifying. That's what um, we're shooting for. And it doesn't matter how unsure you are about it. Uh, that's where we're headed. But because this isn't a YouTube and because we're doing this together live, you're taking time out of your life to be here live. This is probably a better, uh, a better phrasing. It's actually us electrifying. As an, as an educator, I know that if you do something in community, if you learn it, if you have folks holding you accountable, encouraging you, sharing what they're doing, you're going to learn faster and you're going to retain it for longer. So uh, the learning science on why we do this uh, is pretty straightforward. And that's, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, to show up and do it live. So let's talk about the us. Let's get to know us. Um, I'm going to ask you in 90 seconds to fill out this Mad Lib in the chat. You're going to warm up your Zoom skills if you haven't been on them all day. I hope you haven't. Um, each person, click into the chat and then fill in this Mad Lib. You can just put the three answers or you can fill in the sentences and, and type those in. But I want to know your name. I want to know where you are right now. And I want to know one word or a phrase to fill in uh, this sentence. For now, I'm blank about electrification. I'm psyched. I'm scared. I'm curious. Put some slashes in there. Add a sentence to explain what you mean. But 90 seconds, I'll put trombone shorty on the background and uh, we'll come back to it as soon as you get a chance to put it in the chat. Let's go. Part of what this class is about is tapping in to that 
emotion about making progress as a species to a technology and a set of technologies that are genuinely potentially beneficial. There's a million ways to screw this up. A million ways for us to make the power dynamics and power imbalance in society worse. There's no question about it, but there's also some some real pure optimism that we can bring to the table and, and really uh, practice in this community. So that's that's why I'm here uh, and, I'm, and I'm super, super psyched about it. Okay, so let's get back to our goal. We're trying to get here. Um, to get to loving it, we've got to get it. We've got to understand it. And of course, if we're gonna get electrification, we've got to understand the system that we have now. So we've got to get gas, y'all. We've just got to get some gas. Um, my notes say hold for applause. <laughs> okay, thank you. Great, okay, um, excellent. Um, so what is this system that we rely on every single day? Um, it is this, Jake, give me a time check. Where are we on my clock? I have a hard time seeing that. I got 518. it. 18 minutes, cool. <clears throat> this is a sketch that Saul Griffith put together for um, Rewiring America, where you see on the left, of the billion machines in our fossil fuel world, just here in the States, we've got a chunk of those machines on the left extracting fossil fuels, typically from deep in the ground. We've got some machines processing that fuel so that we can move it around and use it in our machines where we need the work done. Um, and we've got a lot of machines at the point of use. The wonderful thing about fossil fuels is that um, they're really energy dense. They have this magical power um, but the problem is, is that we're using combustion engines to do all the work in this cycle. So here's another look at that chart. If you go back to that chart, you can see in gray, the energy flows and in black ink, the, ener the sketches of the billion machines. But let's just look at the energy flows. You can see on the left, solar is a minuscule piece, nuclear, hydro, wind and geo, typically what we think about as renewable fuels. They pale in comparison, just tiny little lines uh, compared to the big chunk of fuel coming from gasoline, coal, uh, biofuels, and petroleum oil. So nat gas here is natural gas, typically uh, compressed and then moved through pipes. You can see some of that flows up to the top, to the electricity grid, and then some of that flows back into our homes, our commercial buildings, our industrial facilities. A lot of it goes straight from the source through refinement to transport in our, in our vehicles. But that big red X is the big problem with fossil fuels. 58% of the energy that we create, that we move around, that we use in our engines disappears. Primarily because we're putting it in these exquisitely inefficient 25% added their very, very best uh, combustion engines. So that's the sort of main challenge. The question is like, why are we doing it this way? Why are we relying on an entire economy built on 25% efficient machines? And the answer is because the magic, the true magic of fossil fuels is how energy dense they are. So on this chart, you can see just a graphic of how energy dense most uh, fossil fuels are. We can talk about the mechanics and the actual kind of lazy vocabulary around the fossils versus renewables, but we spent a lot of our time as species early on burning wood. Then we realized some of that wood left over was charcoal and we could use that again for energy. That's even more energy dense. Let's do that. Then we move over to the bottom right here and we tried coal. It's even, it's not as energy dense, but man, it's everywhere. I just got to scrape it off the top of the mountain. It's all over the place. I don't have to burn wood to get it. That's nice. And then on the top right, you can see natural gas and diesel. So we sort of started in the middle of this spiral and have been working our way counterclockwise through these five fuels over our existence as a species. And the energy density is what keeps us going to this next fuel because they are truly remarkable. And if you look at that tiny dot magnified 50 times, you see lithium ion batteries. They are 100 times uh, less dense than fossil fuels. And so what we have in our system is a gassy system built on this exquisite magic of fossil fuels and this horrible reality of the inefficiency of combustion engines. But that is what has worked. The energy density has really compensated for the bad part of uh, combustion engines. Here's an example in a car, 68 to 72% through the engine because of friction and oil and you know how it works. 
I squeeze gas and air in there, I blow it up, it pushes the piston. That's all moving around in the super efficient. At the end of the day, I'm only getting you know less than 30% of that energy back. Um, I'm gonna have parasitic losses on my um, on the systems in the car. I've got drivetrains through the transmission, I lose another few percent there. And then you know I'm blasting the AC and I'm listening to AC DC on full blast. I'm losing another couple percent. At its best day, a car's given me 25% of the stuff I put in it as far as actually moving me and doing the work I want it to do. So that's that other awful number. So when we compare it to renewables and batteries, for decades and decades, renewables were way too expensive, batteries were way too expensive, and there wasn't enough there to add to the mix of the beauty of electric motors, which compared to industrial and to the combustion engine at 25, an electric motor on a bad day is at 85. On a good day, it's in the high 90s, mid sorry, low 90s. So what we've seen with renewables is a learning curve. Wright's law has been working on those two pieces of that puzzle for the last decade, and 90% reduction in cost in the last decade on renewables and batteries has changed the math of the right side of this. Electric motors have always been magical. Um, fossil fuels have always been magical for their density, but that plus in combustion has until recently been the right math. Now with renewables coming down and batteries coming down, the math is starting to work. And on the life cycle of the combination of the thing on the right, it's cheaper. We still gotta come over some of those uh, upfront costs, but that as that closes, we're gonna see some pretty rapid changes uh, in how we use fuel to do work. So that's a really quick thing. And I think the question is, okay, great, Matt, nice map of a million machines. What the heck do you and I do? Cause I don't run an oil refinery or I don't you know, dig coal out of the ground. So how am I supposed to help? Well, what's amazing about the chart is if you look at Saul's map, 42% of emissions go through our homes and go through our personal vehicles. So collectively, people who live in single family and multifamily homes, um, mostly owned but also rented, have control over 42% of the emissions problem. It's a staggering number. And so that's why uh, we focus on our personal infrastructure. So um, this is the goal. We can love it and we can just focus on uh, living electric. Um, a quick map that I drew, not as cool as Saul's, here's what a gas home looks like. You've, you've got a breaker box, you've got a gas meter, plugged into four appliances and you've got a gas station fueling your vehicles. As you transfer to electrical, you're gonna have much more power going through that breaker box. So the upgrade of that box is one big piece of this puzzle. We may or may not have solar coming from your roof. You may or may not have a battery backing that up so that in an emergency you've got it or if you're in a city where you pay more for electricity in the day than at night, you may store battery, store battery power at night, use it in the day. Your car charger is going to be plugged in to take care of your cars. And then all four of those appliances are going to rely on heat pumps and induction uh, to use electricity instead of gas. So that's sort of the high level. That's what we want to do today is give you a high level playing field. Um, and then again, back to our number line. I don't know where you are on each of these pieces. I don't know where you are on in the big picture, but we're trying to go from may to can to will. That's what we're doing. And that's hopefully what we're doing as a community. If you're further along, I encourage you help a friend in the group to come your way. If you're freaking out and you're way over on the left side here, you need help, ask for it. There are some amazing resources in this group to help you along. Okay, we are at um, the individual plan kickoff. We It just turned 526, so we're 15 seconds off schedule. I'm stunned. Okay, um, but, but I'm going to roll with it. Where we're going to go next. So I am about to drop a link in the chat for you. I'm going to ask you to sign up for a free Trello account. Jake and I are paying five bucks a month for each of you to do this on our end. All it requires for you to do is sign up for a free account. So let, on the left of this slide, you can see what you did in your homework. That's page eight of the pre-read. And it's rewiring America's 10 piece puzzle to the electric home a version of what I just showed you in my sketch. What Jake and I have done is we've taken each of those 10 boxes and we've moved them to a Trello board. And we've got them set up in two columns on your board. One is how you make fuel and how you store it. Those, that's the first column, the first four. And the second column in yellow and blue are how you use that energy. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to give everybody some time to think about where they are and then move those 10 boxes to one of the four columns on the right from uh, most anxious to less anxious to almost confident to almost uh, to, to most confident. Um, and, and I just want to give everybody a chance. You can fine tune those uh, column headings if you want. But what I want you to do here is try and express to the rest of the community visually where you are on this. Um, maybe you've got everything over in the right column. We'll start texting you with advice during the week. Maybe you're way over on the left and you're a rookie like Jake. But I think it's important for the community to start to get a sense of where everyone's at so that we can work together during the month. So. Again, before we launch into other parts of the course that will be more technical or more specific, um, we want to hear where you're at on this on this spectrum. So my question for you today, as we kind of popcorn around the room, is what is what was easy, difficult, or surprising to you about sorting these specific things into categories from most unsure to most confident? And I'll give an example. So with working with Matt for just two weeks and having a conversation around electrifying my life, I put two and two together that I'm actually pretty confident with the idea of using uh, an induction stovetop. I mean, I cook on a single stovetop when I go camping. It's not induction, but it's a similar idea. Um, the efficiencies around it are incredible. I had no idea. I didn't even realize that I've been like breathing gas while I've been cooking at home. You would think that's like obvious, but it hasn't been. And so I'm actually really confident about doing that. So, you know, in 90 seconds or less, let's popcorn around the room and you can pick your most unsure or you can pick your most confident. Um, but either end of those spectrums, we'd love to just hear where you're coming from um, on one of those items that you've sorted. Are you looking for people to just jump in here? Yeah, go ahead, Pierre. Well, um, just real quick, two things. I'm, I'm confident about doing a lot of this stuff in my own home. I'm a general contractor, so I've got a little bit of the wherewithal. The biggest hesitancy is replacing perfectly good appliances. Um, like like Matt, uh, Matt, I'll ask you what you're going to do with your gas-fired tankless water heater, because I'll take them off your hands probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, the other thing is Clayton Carrier, who's also in this chat with us, and I have bought a home, a, a little house as a spec venture, and we're thinking about electrifying the whole thing. It's a whole house gut job. So we're, and, and use that as a marketing tool to, to, to resell it. Um, uh, we think it'll be that, uh, of, uh, have a, a value there uh, that, that like-minded people will appreciate. That's really great insight and thank you for that because it, it's interesting to see this pendulum swift and it being something that was reserved for granola eating Prius driving Californians and Coloradans to something that by and large is becoming more um, adopted by different community groups. Um, so I you know appreciate that that thought. Somebody else, what are we what are we thinking? Most confident, most unsure, either end of the spectrum. This is uh, Alex. I'm up in uh, Washington, D.C., and I, I live in a, uh, a building with 20 units, so it's uh, well, a little bit more complicated. And we have, like, so I'm confident, like, we all, like everybody, most people in the building, actually, the DMV, the, uh, this area has a lot of electric stoves, like, I, more that I used to live farther north, and it was all gas stoves. So we have a gas um, electric stove and electric dryer. Uh, washer dryer, but um, where it's harder is like we have steam heat and and a and a, a water boiled boiler that's uh, gas powered. Uh, both of those are gas powered, and so it's trying to figure. Yeah, we just lost your audio, Alex. Sorry. Alex, we'll let you, can't hear it yet, but maybe just text it, drop it in the chat. If your audio goes yeah. out, comes back, we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, I, Alex, if you can, if you can hear me, um, it's God. Um, I, uh, no, I agree with you. It's, it's interesting on, on auditing our own energy consumption and thinking of in a multi-unit dwelling. Um, what does that look like for someone wanting to have solar? 
Um, and those are questions that I don't know. Um, but again, it's like, that's why we've got Matt, the resident expert on these type of things um, and other people in this chat that might have those ideas or those creative solutions. And again, like that's what we're trying to build at, at my next electric. Um, maybe let's do, we got time for two more, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, two more. I can go real quick, because I'm uh, also curious. Uh, so uh, Aaron, we're uh, in New Orleans and you know, we're totally in on the idea of trying to replace all appliances with electric, but it's the infrastructure that's the problem that we're worried about. Like we only have a hundred amp drop from uh, Intergy. And so how do we design the entire, like from the drop to the panel of figuring eventually we'll have solar, eventually we're gonna have a, a battery backup, but not wanting to, uh, in do what's necessary just to install an electric dryer. And then in a couple of months later, realize, oh, we don't actually have the capacity to add more breakers to do an induction range or do the next phase. Like how do we start from the beginning and actually build uh, a system that can support later on the rest of the electrification as appliances give out? Yeah, great point. The plan is both intimidating and fun to think about at the same time, I agree. And last one, one more. Matt's an old school middle school teacher, so he can wait. Bob Austin in New Orleans. I, we have uh, panels and a battery in our house, so we've taken some pretty big steps. Our appliances are not electric, and I think like other people have mentioned, we're not probably going to replace them until there's a time to do so. Um, we are thinking about our cars, and what does that look like to you know, update our cars, get electric cars? I mean, also living in New Orleans, our streets are terrible. We don't drive anywhere. I feel like I want to just drive my current cars into the ground, you know, and not do anything for five or 10 years and see how much better car electric cars get then. But, you know, yeah. and that's a conversation we're having internally between me and my wife. Thanks, Austin. That's a great point for sure. Thinking about it myself, thinking about it on the bike front. Cool, Matt. Okay, I'll toss it back to you. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. Anybody? I, I know a couple of people are in the in the course have done. Um, you know, all these things are open, and I think the curiosity, right, is is um, the the primary value that we as a community uh, champion. You know, there there are fifty people that have come through this course before you. God bless them. They went through a version of this where there was no Jake. Um, I feel for them, but. Um, you know, it's it's crazy how so much of this conversation that is each of you asking that question about what you're struggling with now over the weeks will turn into y'all bouncing ideas off of one another and collectively starting to realize that you're using this second brain that is the collective creativity and curiosity of this whole group. And in fact, of the alumni that have gone before you. So Jake and I are gonna experiment with a few things to bring you into the journey that those 50 folks are on. There is, I can think of multiple names of people who've gone ahead of you who are maybe right where you are, maybe a little bit ahead of you on every single one of these questions. And that is really cool. Uh, and it puts a little pressure on me and Jake to, to give you access to that and to make sure that each of you is tapping into the collective knowledge. So. There's some folks on the call that I know are have answers to some of these questions and time constraints in this time doesn't allow it, but I really just implore you as Jake and I bring these tools online for you to share, like don't underestimate how powerful it is to just say, hey, I, I just wanna chime in a little bit on that. I either share that fear or I've got an idea or I've tried something. That That is the real, like at, at the core, like under the hood, what my inner teacher wants to have happen here is that we all start to share and work together. So super fired up about that. Um, we're right on track and let me go back to screen share and I'm gonna do one quick experiment here. I want to show you just as a, a real quick glimpse um, into, I think I shared the wrong screen. It's trying, it's trying. It may not do it. We're going to go back to our old reliable. So let's do our slides. Okay. Um, 
We're on track. We're crushing it. So excited. Okay, we've rocked the individual plan. We've moved that homework that you did uh, into Trello and you've all moved it into this, I think, really important um, construct of like, where are you as a human and how do you use this and how does it connect? Um, thank you, Jake. I really appreciate that. Now what? Um, here's where we're going next. So this is a rough outline. This is a prototype. Jake and I feel responsible to give you some structure, but we ask that you tell us that's crap. We want to do something else. So every time we propose something and put structure out, it's a, always your prerogative to give us suggestions and make it more relevant. But this is our current framework. Today is a high level overview, 30,000 feet. What does the gassy world look like? What does the emerging electric world look like? How does it impact each of us in our daily lives and rub up against these three categories of using energy to live our lives? The first is cooking. The second is chilling and creating a home and spending time in the safe place uh, where we sleep and where we spend time with family and friends. And then the third is driving. So we've broken up the rest of the month into these three categories and I'm really fired up about being able to dive deep on each of these, it gives you a little bit of flexibility and transparency on what we're doing. You may be more interested in one of these topics than the other. You're absolutely free to skip a week or to, to come back. Um, you're, we encourage you to be here at least once uh, on the Wednesday 5 o'clock and the Thursday 12 o'clock, both central uh, blocks. But the way we'll do each of these is on Wednesdays we will have a little bit of deep dive on the science and deep dive on some of the practical sort of pro tips on what real people are doing and what I and others have learned about, for example, induction and cooking with it, both on a portable stove and an installed stove. Um, so we'll start that tomorrow on the Thursday office hour session. Again, that's the noon lunch block, noon to one central time. So we will start our induction work tomorrow and then we'll also hit that um, throughout the week through text chats and maybe even some experiments with Discord and Slack servers. So we're gonna experiment with how we stay in touch. Um, on the 22nd, we'll start our heat pumps work. So many of those uh, home appliances rely on the magic of heat pumps, which are 600% efficient. For Depending on the, the quality of that heat pump, for every unit of energy you get in it, you can get six, seven times more energy out. And they're really fascinating technologies and they're applying to more and more things on that list. So it does require some time to um, spend some time getting to know that and understand it a little bit. And then, you know, driving and riding the EV life. I think a mix of mobility solutions is probably in our future. I think it makes life more fun when you aren't always relying on your 2.35 cars. Um, so we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna cover everything from micro mobility all the way up, we'll spend a little bit of time on carbon credits for air travel. So um, we'll try and just create some space in the Wednesday slug and then in the Thursday slug to cover those. Um, on October 8th, that's Saturday morning at 10, we will celebrate and we will have an unconference. In 20 years of helping uh, facilitate events for people, especially people who are trying to do new things, the unconference format is my favorite way to spend an hour. And so we're gonna spend an hour, it's part show and tell, part humble brag, part sharing, part party. And we're gonna do that on Zoom and we're gonna do it uh, in that one hour, 10 to 11 on the 8th. So uh, that's our schedule. There's a lot of New Orleans people here. I will also reach out. There may be some in real life um, slugs of time where I get us together if you're open. That's obviously optional. So that's the agenda. Any questions about that? Stuff that doesn't make sense. Cool. Silence is golden. Thank you for that thumbs up. Okay, we're at 55 minutes. That means we're at feedback. Oh look, someone reminded me of the survey link. That's so thoughtful of them. Okay, I'm gonna drop that in the chat. I'm gonna take uh, my screen share off. And I'm just going to play some trombone shorty for the last five minutes. Mic's open. Feel free to tell us what you think live to our face. Feel free to tell us in the type form. 
Um, if there's any technical glitches with that, please let me know, but that link should take you to a very short three question survey about what we can do better uh, based on what you just did. Appreciate all of you being here. Hope Trombone takes us away. Jake, do you have anything for us? Um, yeah, the only thing I would mention is along the journey from cooking, comfort, and transport, um, we're going to be tying in that energy consumption, creation, storage as well. So in all of those roles, we're going to weave that thread of, okay, well, what about solar powers? What about that, um, the panel on your house, you know, um, focusing on the usage of that, that power, but also want to, you know, mention that we know that battery storage, that energy creation, where that energy is coming from is going to be a topic that comes up in each of those sections of, of machine use. Epic. Thank you, Jake. Also, love the chats that are going on. It's already starting. It's so great. Indeed. I love reading them. We, yeah, we are like giddy about this. It's so fun. So, so grateful to all of you. Uh, Steven mentioned a raffle for a bike that I'm building. Steven doesn't realize it takes me three years to build a bike. So, you know, that raffle <laughs> took is worth, not even worth the paper you it's printed on. Um, um, so, so cool that, um, that you've been here, that we started with such great energy. I want to make sure I put a plug in for tomorrow at noon. Um, before noon tomorrow, you're going to see an email from me with a few links. Um, Rewiring America is a shadow partner of ours. Um, they put out really great stuff. They just put out an amazing document on how to navigate the Inflation Reduction Act and how all of these incentives apply to the conversation we're having. That will be in that. Uh, some version of a video link uh, will be there. And then Jake, your suggestion, um, yes, the invite for tomorrow uh, will come in that as well. So a Google Calendar invite uh, to the Thursday will come. If I can just get a show of hands, if your thumbs up for us using Google Calendar to share information about sessions, cool. If it's thumbs down, let me know. We're trying to respect your privacy. We don't dump everybody's emails there, but it's super convenient for us. Great. So look for that. Some of that detail will be in the invite. We're at six o'clock. I want to honor your time. I love you. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. We will see as many of you as we see tomorrow and maybe others next Wednesday. Take care. Have a great one.